Ladies and gentlemen, the flags on the podium represent countries of origin of Ripon College graduates and other students. We honor them with their flags. We now honor the flag of Wisconsin and the United States of America with the presentation of flags by cadets of the Ripon College ROTC unit. Please remove your caps. Cadets, present the colors. You may be seated. <clears throat> Good afternoon, members of the graduating class, parents and friends of the graduates, faculty and staff and distinguished guests. I'm Zach Massetti, the 13th president of Ripon College. It is a pleasure to welcome you to the commencement in 2018 in this, the 167th year of Ripon College. The exercises today are a celebration. We are here to honor the scholars who will walk the stage in a few minutes. Soon to be grads, we are all proud of you, your faculty, staff, and your families and friends. We applaud your experiences and achievements inside and outside of the classroom. Today, we also celebrate the achievements of your soon-to-be alma mater, Ripon College, our college, once again about to send new alumni out into a world that needs your service, your wisdom, and your talent. And while your degree may be an individual achievement, you stand on the shoulders of so many people, the pride of your relatives and friends, your professors and coaches, and the staff who worked with you during your time at Ripon. Today is an important day for them, too. It has been a tradition at Ripon since 1957 to focus each commencement upon a particular theme. The theme changes each year, but it always relates to the college's commitment to the liberal arts. This, the 152nd commencement at Ripon, celebrates the theme Civil Discourse and Dialogue by recognizing the commitment of three individuals who are dedicated to supporting these values. For, uh, and creating space for crucial conversations. Our keynote speaker, Judy Woodruff, is anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. She's covered politics and other news for more than four decades at CNN, NBC, and PBS. I had the amazing good fortune of working with Judy at CNN early in my career. She's one of the most widely respected and decorated journalists of her generation. She's balanced, thorough, and interested in getting to the truth. Her commitment to excellence has made us all better informed citizens about the most important issues facing our country and the world. Each year, the college celebrates its founding by honoring, honor, honor, honoring a community partner with the Founders Day Award. 
This award is given to an individual or organization who exemplifies the ideals of the founders of Ripon College and who's contributed above and beyond to the mission of the school. Representative Joan Barwig, now in her seventh term, has done so much for Ripon College throughout the years, whether by hosting student internships or as an active participant in numerous campus workshops, discussion forums, and town hall meetings. She is a citizen legislator known to work across the aisle who listens to community and is a recognized leader. Today we also honor Dr. Richard Zimmon, a 45-year veteran public educator and administrator with our Distinguished Educator Award. Dr. Zimmon is a, is a retired superintendent of Ripon Area School District and helped the district achieve excellence at the highest levels. His commitment to the community along with the introduction of innovative programs and transparent communications is a model for teachers and administrators around the state and the nation. We will begin by presenting the Distinguished Educator Award to Dr. Richard Zimmon. He'll be presented for the award by Trustee Thomas Broman, Class of 1976. In recognition of your 45-year career as a public educator and educational policy consultant, including nine years as superintendent of the Ripon Area School District, with respect for your significant accomplishments to introduce innovative programs to address the needs of the community, including a four-year-old preschool program, an off-site charter school for at-risk students, an in-district program for cognitively disabled and autistic students, a K-12 program for English language learners, the creation of a continuum of four-year project-based learning charter schools for K-12 K students, online learning courses for high school students, and the senior tax exchange program to increase volunteerism of retired citizens in district schools. In recognition of your dedication to transparent district communications, including your work to usher in the Alert Now message system to deliver timely recorded messages, emails or text messages when an emergency arises, a public communications program pioneering the use of social media, and a staff salary plan modeled after colleges and universities. With admiration, for your unwavering commitment to school children and their families, public teachers and staff, and the broadest community. President Massetti, honored guests and members of the Ripon College community, thank you for this humbling honor. There are so many others that deserve my thanks and I would list them all, but we don't have that much time before sundown. Let me say to the graduates that what you see here today is proof that one of the keys is to surround yourself with people who make you look good. And I am grateful to all those people who were there for me during my life's journey. I realize that you're not here to listen to me, so I'll keep this brief. 45 years ago, wearing a cap and gown, this Boston lad sat on a folding chair on a campus lawn just up the highway at my own college graduation. I grew up in the era when President Kennedy asked us to work for a better country and a better world. For me, the answer was working to improve schools in order to provide a better educational experience for students and their families. Education, I believe then, and still believe now, is the pathway to opportunity. The only thing that I really remember about my college graduation, however, other than it was a gorgeous June day, is sitting there and thinking about my own immediate future. What was it going to be like in the real world? You see, in the spring of my senior year in college, I had somehow convinced a principal to give me a teaching contract at a small, rural Wisconsin high school where I single-handedly served as the school's history department. I had lots of questions and no answers as I sat through my own college graduation, 
But it turns out that principle launched me on my way to a wonderful career in public education. Decades of twists and turns later through teaching, administrative, and consulting positions, I can only hope that I gave as much to those around me as I received from them, my students, colleagues, parents, and community members. In the days and months ahead, when you are full of questions about your direction in life, please remember that today's recognition shows that people do notice when you aim for something greater than yourself. In my case, it was helping others stretch themselves, empathize with others, and contribute to a better world through education. As we celebrate your college commencement, my sincerest hope is for you to find your own way to make the world a better place. It's unlikely that any of us will be famous or long remembered, but we can make a positive difference for others. And that you will find, as I have, is one of the most satisfying things you will ever do. This college has prepared you for engaging in the world as an informed and empowered citizen, and I congratulate you on concluding this phase of your preparation for whatever comes next. I hope you surround yourself with talented and supportive people and wish you well on the twists and turns of your own life's journey. In conclusion, I would be remiss if I did not give a special thank you to my wife, Valerie, who is a superior educator in her own right and has always been there as my greatest supporter. Thank you, Valerie. Best wishes to all you moms out there on this Mother's Day, and thank you, Ripon College, for this very humbling honor. Thank you, Dr. Zimmon. Just a uh, side note, that school up the road was Lawrence, but he shines up pretty well for a guy who went to Lawrence, right? <laughs> In keeping with today's theme of civil discourse and dialogue, we present our first honorary degree, Literarium Humanorum Doctor, Doctor of Humane Letters, to Representative Joan Balwig. Representative Balwig is also our 2018 Founders Day Award recipient, and as I said, each year Rippon celebrates its founding by honoring an individual organization who exemplifies the ideal of the founders of Rippon College and who has contributed above and beyond to the mission of the school. Representative Balwig will be presented by Trustee Bob Welch, Ripon College Class of 1992 and former Wisconsin State Representative and Senator. Good afternoon. Let me start by saying that I met Representative Balwig more than 20 years ago. I've gotten to know her very well and her family. She is the perfect candidate today when we're talking about civil discourse, it is really hard to find anyone who has a bad word to say about Joan. This session, uh, for example, she passed more bills than any other legislator, and on all of those bills, there was not a single opposing vote from a member of the opposing party. That takes a lot of work. So in recognition of your public service as representative for Wisconsin's 41st Assembly District for the last 14 years, with respect for your bipartisan leadership on legislation impacting agriculture, small business, health care, and education in the state of Wisconsin, including but not limited to the comprehensive red tape review of Wisconsin's administrative rules, the Donate to Life license plate organ donation fund, same-day fishing licenses, as well as your ongoing efforts to strengthen families and early childhood education and modernize the small claims court process, and for your outstanding service as Majority Caucus Chairperson in the 2011 and 2013 sessions, Co-Chair of the Joint Committee for Review of Administrative Rules, and your membership on the committees of college and universities, children and families, mental health, rules, Joint Legislative Council, jobs in the economy, international affairs and commerce, the Speaker's Task Force on Foster Care and Tourism, and several other special committees, in admiration for your leadership roles with the Council of State Governments, currently serving as Vice Chair and soon to be National President in 2020, and the National Conference of State Legislators Three Branch Institute on Improving Child Safety and Preventing Child Fatalities, in recognition of your work on the Marquesan City Council from 87 to 91, and as Mayor of Marquesan from 91 to 97, 
and for the example you've set as a citizen legislator who listens to the community, modeling the ideals of the founders of Ripon College and contributing above and beyond to the mission of Ripon College. <laughs> Representative Bowen, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Ripon College, I present you with the 2018 Ripon College Founders Award and confer upon you the degree Literarium Humanorum Doctor Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Well, thank you very much, and, and congratulations, graduates. It is indeed... Um, humbling and uh, a real honor to um, be recognized in this way by uh, not only Ripon College, but my, my local community. Um, I don't think you truly understand the, um, the relationship that I and my family have had with Ripon College long before, long before I was in this role as state representative. Uh, at one point, and I'm sure many of the long-serving faculty here remember when you had a program that encouraged youth to spend their summers in advanced um, college experience. All of my children were had that opportunity here at Ripon College. Um, I remember when Todd Ware Hall actually was two buildings with a breezeway that many of you probably have no clue that that actually, that actually was like that through the development of, of Ripon College. And since it is Mother's Day, I am going to talk a little bit about my family. I'm sure all of you um, graduates don't really understand the, the depth of feeling that your, your parents, especially your moms, do today in how they have guided you and helped you to achieve what you are achieving today. And they're very sad that they no longer feel that they will have as influential a time um, in their lives with you, but they are so much looking forward to see what you will accomplish and how you will return to them and their families and your now soon to be alma mater, uh, the wonderful things that you can pay forward that they have provided for you. As I mentioned, I was going to mention my kids. My oldest son, as I said, was in an advanced college experience and actually was the uh, teaching assistant for Dr. Barris along the way. And back in those days when uh, he was in high school in the late 90s, uh, we were just trying to get to the point where we could advance some of the opportunities for our youth in our rural schools growing up in Marquesan. And as a high school junior, he had exhausted all the math and computer classes at, at Marquesan High School because there were no computer classes at Marquesan High School. <laughs> And he spent half of his junior year and high school year of high school here on campus um, learning from your professors. And there was a wonderful partnership between our local K-12 uh, schools and Ripon College. Same thing with my daughter, Chris, who um, spent most of her high school senior year here on campus. Uh, working in the areas of um, sciences uh, that she had exhausted in Marquesan High School and political science. And um, I don't know if anyone knows my political persuasion, but it was only recently that I took down that Hillary poster out of her, uh, out of her bedroom. But uh, they've both been very successful and, and gone on their way. And, and I do appreciate so much that when uh, Chris was uh, admitted to UW-Madison, she had 30 credits in her pocket that she could take from Ripon, High School, uh, Ripon College. And I do appreciate as a parent and someone who paid tuition that that was very helpful. And I, and I really do appreciate the strong partnership that we've had with our local communities and with Ripon College. And, and last but not least, my uh, daughter, Rebecca, who is here. Uh, unfortunately, that ACE program uh, wasn't available for more than a year 
while she was here, but uh, we did, uh, we did uh, uh, talk to a couple of uh, students along the way to uh, give her some tutoring. Uh, she was uh, not a math major, uh, but she, uh, she did need to get some math, uh, and she has been, she is very accomplished when it comes to um, communications and public relations. And I'm very proud of, of all of my kids, and my husband, Tom, who, who um, actually harassed me into running for the state assembly in the first place, and 14 years later, now it's all history. The point I wanted to make here is that Ripon College has been a very important part, not only of the, the um, heritage of my family, uh, but also I don't think you realize what you really bring to the community and the partnerships that you have with uh, K-12 education, the uh, opportunity to have all of you young people here in, uh, in our local area that brings even more vibrance and interest to uh, the Green Lake and Ripon community and the, um, the scholars and faculty that are here that really make this part of the 41st district uh, very unique and very wonderful. And I do appreciate that Ripon College has provided me with this honor, but I do believe that Ripon College has done so much more for my community and for my family. And I do thank you very sincerely. Thank you, Representative Barwig. Our second honorary degree candidate and today's keynote speaker is Judy Woodruff, and she will receive an honorary degree, Literarium Humanorium Doctor, Doctor of Humane Letters. She'll be presented for, uh, for the degree by trustee Penelope Green. Judy Woodruff, with respect for your distinguished career spanning more than four decades at CNN, NBC, and PBS, including your current position as anchor and managing editor of PBS NewsHour, in honor of your significant contributions as one of the most widely respected and decorated journalists of your generation, having earned a Cine Lifetime Achievement Award, a Duke Distinguished Alumni Award, the Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award in Broadcast Journalism and Television, the University of Southern California Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism, the Al Newharth University of South Dakota Award for Excellence in Journalism, and the Gaylord Prize for Excellence in Journalism and Mass Communications from the University of Oklahoma, among others. In recognition of your mentorship as a founding co-chair of the International Women's Media Foundation, an organization dedicated to promoting and encouraging women in communication industries worldwide. In acknowledgement of your role as visiting professor at Duke University's Terry Sanford Institute of Public Policy and visiting fellow at Harvard University's Joan Shorenstein Center on the Press, Politics and Public Policy. And in admiration of your public service as trustee for the Freedom Forum, the Museum, the Duke Endowment, the Urban Institute, and as a member of the Knight Foundation Commission on Intercollegiate Athletics. Judy Woodruff, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Ripon College, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Thank you, Penelope, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, to President Massetti, to uh, Joan Balwig and Richard Zimmon, your fellow honorees, to trustees, faculty, 
administrators, family, friends, and especially the Ripon College class of 2018. Congratulations! <laughs> I am so deeply honored to be here at this historic school, thrilled to celebrate commencement with you today. And as a mother myself, I want to wish all the moms here, you can't say it often enough, Happy Mother's Day. It is made even more special because, as you heard, your president, when he was a younger man, worked for me at CNN as a brilliant researcher and producer. We all knew that Zach Massetti was destined for great things. I am incredibly proud of what he, with the support of his wife, Julia, have achieved here at Ripon. Zach Massetti, you deserve a hand. So of course, when President Massetti reached out to me to ask me to join you for graduation, I immediately said yes. And thankfully, there's nothing much going on in the news right now. So it was easy to get away. Even so, I am sure that some of you graduates, maybe most of you, are wondering what possibly could a television newswoman who graduated from college decades ago have to say that would be interesting to 21 and 22 year olds? Well, given that the longest commencement address on record was given at Harvard College in the early 1800s, lasted more than six hours, <laughs> delivered first in Latin, and then repeated in Greek. I'm aiming for more like 11 minutes and in English. <laughs> but before I begin, how about those Red Hawks? <laughs> Uh, women's basketball won the Midwest Conference title, the men basketball runners-up. Let's give them a hand and all the Red Hawk teams. So I have three messages today. One, after the celebrating, you have responsibilities now, especially to give back. Two, has to do with the divided political environment we find ourselves in and the need for civil discourse, your theme this year. And third, the importance of truth. You have received an excellent education at this outstanding institution. I talked a few days ago with a handful of graduating seniors about your time here, and after they explained the essential role of tall Pauls and Millers in a <laughs> Ripon experience, Every one of them mentioned professors or staff who've made a big difference. You came to Ripon for different reasons. David Ferrari liked that they gave out free cookies on the, the visitor's tour. <laughs> Jessica Drouse was happy to be able to bring her horse near campus. <laughs> but they and Alexa Beck, Josh Shubring, and Lauren Hintz <laughs> mainly, mainly were attracted by the closeness of this community, the academic excellence, and the chance to learn and grow intellectually and socially and start taking control of your destiny. David told me, if you want to do something, they will give you the resources, but they don't box you in. When his interest changed midway through school, he got immediate help, he told me, and he singles out theater professor Ken Hill. Jessica spoke of Applause, okay, <laughs> Professor Hill. Jessica spoke of biology professor Mark Keynes, who she said went out of his way to give guidance about preparing for medical school when she walked into his office one day even though she had never met him. Alexa praised a former professor of psychology, Jason Cowell, who stayed in touch with her, offered critiques of her work well after their classes ended. Ripon came through clearly as a special place. Every senior shared a sense of growth, an air of optimism, and affection for the four years that you've spent here. And demonstrating that civil discourse is not just an ideal, it's something you live here. Josh was communications chief for college Republicans, while Lauren was president of college Democrats. And they were polite on the phone call with each other. 
something we need a lot more of in Washington. My message to each one of you is to take the good lessons you learned here of generosity, of civility, of hard work, and commit to yourself that you will live those values in your own life. With this great opportunity comes obligation. You also have a responsibility to build on this superb education by taking some time to help those less fortunate than you volunteer for a reading program for underprivileged kids, or at an assisted living facility for those in the twilight of their lives. Or maybe it's work with the Special Olympics. So many possibilities out there. Find opportunities throughout your life to give a hand up to others who have not had the blessings you have. When I was 14 years old, President John F. Kennedy spoke to every American when he said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. I had no idea at that time what I would do with my life. As an army brat who had grown up moving around the world, eventually attending segregated schools in the South, and at a time of only limited opportunities for women, my mother never finished high school, but I was profoundly affected by what I heard. I wanted somehow to make a difference. We've come a very long way since then. Legal segregation is no longer tolerated. And well over half, some 56% of college students today are women. Of course, Ripon was way ahead of its time. Your very first class of graduates in 1867 was for women. But there are still inequalities in American life along racial and gender and economic lines. It took decades, but the Me Too movement that sprang up last fall after revelations of mistreatment of women in the workplace was a reminder that these behaviors still exist across all sectors of our society. What does this have to do with you? You have a responsibility to speak up if you think someone is being mistreated, disrespected, no matter what form it takes. Margaret Mead, the great anthropologist, said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. It is the only thing, indeed, that ever has. Second, you graduate at a moment of great political division in our country. Not since the debate over the Vietnam War, which consumed the United States when I was your age, and in the years after I graduated, have Americans been so politically polarized. In this environment, there is an urgent need for civil discourse. That doesn't mean sacrificing principles or philosophy. It means trying to understand the other person's point of view and discussing and debating difficult, sometimes emotional issues in a compelling but a civil fashion. On the national level, example, it's possible to oppose a tax cut bill as unfair and counterproductive without questioning the motives of people who are for it. You simply disagree. Or you can oppose the Affordable Care Act, known as Obamacare, as too much government intrusion without charging proponents with political pandering. There are moments when voters and politicians, for the good of the country, need to put aside partisanship for the sake of partisanship. As you all know very well, it was here in the town of Ripon where the modern Republican Party was born. So let's talk about a couple of Republicans. John McCain, and I hope everyone will say a silent prayer this afternoon for the seriously ill Arizona Senator. He was held for five and a half years as a Vietnam prisoner of war, brutally beaten, tortured. And yet, in subsequent years, he led the effort to normalize relations with that country. And he told President Bill Clinton, who had avoided service during the Vietnam War and was an object of controversy with veterans, that when President Clinton visited the Vietnam War Memorial Wall, that he, John McCain, would be there, would have his back. Or in 1978, Tennessee's Howard Baker was the Republican leader in the U.S. Senate. 
He was already running for his party's presidential nomination two years later. Jimmy Carter was the Democratic president struggling to find his political footing, who proposed a treaty to turn over the Panama Canal, then controlled by the U.S., to Panama. It was opposed by three out of four Republican voters. It couldn't get the two-thirds vote necessary for ratification in the Senate without Howard Baker. At sacrifice to his political career, Baker, Howard Baker supported the treaty, without which there almost surely would have been violence in Central America. These are the sort of Republicans, just one of many, who were envisioned in Ripon in the beginning when the party was founded in opposition to slavery and embedded in what later became the Ripon Society. Okay, enough history. But whether in your neighborhood, in your local town, your state, or the nation, this is the compass that can guide you in the years ahead. Politics can be tough. The stakes can be huge, the consequences dire, but it does not have to be mean-spirited and lacking in civility. We in the news media have a responsibility too. Thank you. We in the news media have a responsibility, not just to be accurate and fair in our reporting, that goes without saying, but also not to exaggerate differences, to fan the flames of disagreement, not to turn political opponents into blood enemies. It's tempting to do, as conflict draws an audience. But at the PBS NewsHour, we believe our mission is, yes, to tackle all the tough issues, but to do so in a civil way, no matter that social media may be raining insults all around us. And there are many, many others in the news media as well who I know have the same belief and believe that's their mission. Third, civil discourse is only possible with a commitment to truth and transparency. These are the lifeblood of a free society. Now, we all exaggerate. Research probably shows I wasn't quite as studious or perfectly behaved as I told my children I was. <laughs> this is true in all walks of life, certainly including public figures. When one president said, you can keep your health plan under the Affordable Care Health Care Act, or another president said evidence was conclusive that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, they were later called out for it. Some prominent politicians haven't always been honest. I'm thinking of Watergate or personal embarrassments. But when lies become pervasive, a way of life, whatever the short-term gains, they erode and imperil our democratic society. Whether you are a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent, this is something we should all focus on and worry about today. Michael Hayden, who was a four-star general, retired general, former director of the CIA, has just published a book, Assault on Intelligence, in which he expresses deep concerns about the threat of this erosion, not just on our system of government, but on our civilization. Reckless charges have been leveled from top government officials against the judicial system and the courts Respected judges have been accused of dishonest bias and charges against science over the phenomenon of climate change. In my profession, we are accused of creating fake news. I've been a journalist for almost a half a century at four different news organizations. Sometimes our reporting has been better than other times. It has never been fake. We have a special responsibility We have a special responsibility to be careful and whenever possible to explain the sources of our work. And every journalist I know loves this country every bit as much as those elected to high office. As you, as you leave here, you graduates of the class of 2018, resolve to be truth tellers, to prize and to demand honesty. Finally, no commencement speech is complete without advice. I'll keep it short. <laughs> if you remember nothing else I say to you today, don't be afraid to fail. I've had a wonderful career in journalism, NBC's White House correspondent, CNN anchor, and now the best job in television, managing editor and anchor of the PBS NewsHour. But when I started out as a journalist, 
I repeatedly faced roadblocks. I didn't get the story I wanted to cover. I was removed as anchor of the 6 p.m. newscast. I was taken off covering the campaign of the leading presidential candidate, and so on and so on. I almost threw in the towel a number of times, but ultimately, I hung in there. Ask anyone you meet who you consider a success if they ever blew it. What is a, there's no shame, no shame in failing. What's a mistake is giving up. No matter what disappointments you suffer, you broke up with that boyfriend or girlfriend, you didn't get the job you thought was perfect, or accepted into your favorite, favored graduate school, be disappointed for a moment, but keep going. Try again and again. The poet Robert Browning said it best, ah, but a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? And he meant that for women, too. In closing, no matter what else you do today, when this ceremony is over, go find mom and dad or dad or the loved ones who helped you get to this day. Thank them and give them a big hug, and congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. <clears throat> it's a tradition at Ripon College that each year the graduating class presents a gift to the college. Presenting this year's senior class gift are the senior class gift officers, Elliot Hardeman, Kat Koulis, Al Miller, Corey Beecher, Sophie Widman, Lauren Hintz, and Avery Herbin. Will you please come forward? Thank you, President Massetti. The Senior Class Gift Committee has been working to make the Class of 2018 Senior Class Gift a truly memorable one. As a way of us to leave our mark at Ripon College, without the help of the Ripon College community, this effort would not have been successful. We are here to show you just how much the Class of 2018 appreciates Ripon College. This year's gift will be split to support both the Senior Class Scholarship and the Annual Fund. A special thank goes to the Alumni Board or Alumni Association Board of Directors for a matching gift of $565 for our 72% class participation. Your generous support of the senior class gift is greatly appreciated and we look forward to following your footsteps as we embrace our new role as the Ripping College alumni. Our class went above and beyond in our giving this year. 12 of our classmates are joining the prestigious 1851 Club with generous gifts throughout the year, adding to our class's legacy at Ripon. We are also near the top of the class leaderboard on one-day rally, Ripon's first giving day, with 39 students making a gift to the college. Mr. President, the class of 2018 is pleased to inform that uh, this year, the 72% of the senior class participated and raised a total of $2,267.62. Combined with the alumni board match, we are honored to present to you, uh, to the college, a gift totaling $2,832.62. Thank you to the class of 2018. You should take great pride in our gift and its lasting impact on your alma mater. Thank you, and a sincere thank you to uh, the members of the Ripon College class of 2018 for your, for your generosity. So to welcome uh, our graduates to the ranks of Ripon College alumni, I'd like to present Gene Schneider, Ripon College class of 1990, president of the Ripon College Alumni Association Board of Directors. Gene. Thank you very much, Zach.
Class of 2018, congratulations. As president of the Ripon College Alumni Association Board of Directors, it is my honor and privilege to officially welcome you to the ranks of Ripon College alumni. You are joining more than 11,000 others who are a part of a very special group, the extended Ripon College family. Today is all about celebrating you. However, please remember that every day of your life will bring multiple people to appreciate, love, and celebrate. Graduates, think for a moment about all of those in your life, your family and friends, all of the special people that have helped you along your journey. Always make sure you appreciate everything they sacrificed for you. Keep them close and continue to walk your journey beside them. The great news is that today, your family has grown even more, and you are now a part of a family that includes all Ripon College alumni. This family will always be there for you as well. In addition to maintaining your ties with the college, the role of the alumni board is to grow your relationships with Ripon alumni you know today and the thousands of alumni you have yet to meet. Many of these friendships will follow you throughout your entire life. You will find Ripon people nearly everywhere you go. From personal experience, I can tell you that once you find out you are both Ripon grads, you will see the smile, the knowing look, you will greet each other as old friends, and you will both feel that special connection that only being a part of the Ripon family can bring. As you begin this new journey, the Ripon College Alumni Board will always be there to help. We have already grown your family through some of our sponsored events, including the Senior VIP Party, the Cap and Gown Party, several Alumni Career Days, and the Career Discovery Tour. As new Ripon alumni, there are now many opportunities to develop relationships with your extended Ripon family, alumni of all ages who share the Ripon College experience and community. Going forward, please make sure to take advantage of all the alumni events regional get-togethers, summer reunions, and so many other networking opportunities. These events are incredibly fun, and they will allow you to relive your Ripon experience as well as create many new, lifelong memories. And if you are interested in giving back, please consider being a member of the Ripon Alumni Board, where you can continue to contribute in building and executing the vision of the Alumni Association. Our Board of Directors contain a diverse group of members of all ages, including some very talented board members who were sitting in your chairs just a few years ago, proving that you are never too young to become involved in your new role as alumni of the college. When I sat in one of those chairs in 1990, standing before you today was the furthest thing from my mind. You will find that life takes many unexpected twists and turns. The lessons I learned at Ripon, both in and out of the classroom, and the friendships I have made through the Ripon family have helped me in countless ways on my own journey. We know and are excited that adding the class of 28, sorry, the class of 2018, <laughs> will make Ripon's over 11,000 families stronger than ever. On behalf of your Ripon College Alumni Association, congratulations again as you embark on the next step of your journey, and welcome to the Ripon College Alumni family. Thank you. Each year, the uh, th thank you, Gene. Each year, the senior class board recommends a senior to address graduates on this special occasion. Our speaker this year is David Ferrari of Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin. David graduates today with a major in theater and a minor in business management. During his time at Ripon, David has been a personality on campus and an active participant in student life. He served on the summer orientation committee held leadership roles in the Theta Chi fraternity, acted in 10 theater productions, earning Kennedy Senator, Senator nominations twice, and was the face of the popular Red Hawk Minute video series. After graduation, David plans to move to Chicago to pursue more acting education and a career in theatrical performance. David. You know, when I first signed up for this, they didn't tell me I was going to follow up a state representative and a news anchor, so I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> I would like to give a quick thank you to my roommates, the Speaker Bureau, and everyone else who helped me craft this speech. I wouldn't be able to do this without your help. President Massetti, honored guests, trustees, the graduating class of 2018, faculty, faculty staff, Families, friends, Romans, and countrymen. Oh good, first laugh's out of the way. <laughs> good afternoon. It is an honor for me to be here before you on this momentous day to celebrate the culmination of the Ripon College class of 2018's time as undergraduate students. 
I did not know how best to start this speech, so I decided it would be appropriate to get the commencement speech cliches out of the way so we can get to the good stuff. It seems like it was just yesterday we were moving in during Welcome Week. <laughs> this is the first day of the rest of our lives. Don't be afraid of failure. Never stop learning. <laughs> Follow your passion, your dreams, your heart. Trust your gut and your instincts. And what commencement speech would be complete without letting you know how Merriam-Webster defines a word? <laughs> Stalling means to speak or act in a deliberately vague way in order to gain more time to deal with a question or issue. <laughs> I would assume many of us are familiar with stalling or procrastinating. Hands up, how many of us have started a paper within 24 hours of its deadline? That's not just for the graduating class. <laughs> All right, 12 hours. One hour. We already, we're getting our degree, they can't stop us now. How many of us have put off finishing a commencement speech longer than we should have? <laughs> There's always one. Do, 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 do. Turn page, okay. We've all seen people stall for one reason or another. I don't want to pick my classes for next semester until I know what classes my friends are taking. I don't want to finish my Jay's mac and cheese because then I will no longer have Jay's mac and cheese. <laughs> I'm going to wait on doing laundry because I still have a pair of clean underwear and it's sophomore year and I suddenly have to pay for this. <laughs> You know. I speak for the people. Stalling is a great way to stretch out the time between responsibilities, but I think we'd all agree that we do not want to pursue a life of putting off for tomorrow what must be done today. There is a quote often attributed to author John Augustus Shedd that goes, a ship is safe in harbor, but that is not what a ship is for. We have spent the last four years learning, making connections, and growing. Please, do not let this go to waste. As students in beginning acting class are taught, look for opportunities to make a bold choice. You will not stand out if you are doing what everyone else is doing, or if you play it safe. Sign up for a half marathon, prepare for it, and finish it. Apply for a job you are not sure you will get. We shouldn't wait for someone to walk by and serve our dreams on a silver platter. It's not going to happen. We have to put ourselves out there and push ourselves to get to where we want to go, regardless of what life throws our way. The summer after my sophomore year, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. For those unaware, it's a chronic disease that affects one's digestive tract. On particularly bad days, it can cause myself to be unable to eat or drink or move due to pain. I've had times where I've been bedridden for close to a week. If you've ever been in a similar situation, you know how frustrating it feels, but you also know how good the good days feel. We don't always have control when our bad days happen or how bad they are. What we do have control over is how we react to them. If you're having an off day, reach out to family and friends. If something terrible happens, take the time you need to recover. It's okay to be knocked down. It happens to everyone. But remember to get back up. Another topic dear to my heart is the importance of self-care. The only person that is guaranteed to be with you for your entire life is you. I ask that you remember to take care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. Go to the gym. Find a good life counselor or mentor. Everything you can do to help yourself now is going to help you later on in life. Be kind to yourself so that it's easier to be kind to others. Speaking of others, there are now over seven and a half billion people on this earth. We are going to meet very different people from ourselves in this life, and what a great thing that is. Take the time to learn about other people, their culture, and their values. Listen to people who have different opinions from your own. Civil discourse 
is not a boxing match. It's an opportunity to hear another perspective and find common ground. We need each other if we are going to improve our communities, our countries, and the world. We need to remember that we are all human, that we are all worthy of respect, that we should celebrate both our differences and our similarities. To quote Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Gatto, at this place, at this moment of time, all mankind is us, whether we like it or not. Let us make the most of it before it is too late. So to all of you in attendance today, I wish you well in your endeavors as you move forward with your lives. I thank you again for the opportunity to speak before you today. I ask that you treat yourself and others well in the coming years. I hope that you rise above your bad days, that you never forget the memories that you made in Ripon, and that you find yourself back here at our alma mater to share what you learn outside of Ripon College. Thank you. Thank you, David. Theater major, right? Theater major. Couldn't get away with the laundry thing for, for another couple of years. OK. All right. Will the members of the graduating class please rise? And gentlemen, replace your mortarboards. President Massetti, it is my pleasure to present to you the members of the Ripon College class of 2017 who, by vote of the faculty, have completed the course of study for the degree Bachelor of Arts. All right. Before I actually confer your degrees upon you, I would ask you, as your time as college students comes to a close, to take a few moments to think about the special people who've played the most important role in getting you to this point in your lives. Would you please turn toward your parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, spouses, and everyone who has supported you in the pursuit of your degree, and take this opportunity to show them your appreciation. Thank you, parents and families. You have every reason to be proud. Ladies and gentlemen, by the action of the faculty, the Board of Trustees concurring, no, this, is, this is yours. This is me, but, but it's all good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, by the action of the faculty, the Board of Trustees concurring, and by the virtue of the authority invested in me, because the authority is only vested in me. <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> I confer upon you the degree Artium Baccalaureus with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Okay, so we'll all but the first row now be seated, and Dean Wingenbach, will you present the members of the Ripon College class of 2018 for their diplomas? Emma C. Allen. Michaelena Cherie Ambroviak. James Anthony Amadeo. Adriana Parker Anding. Nicholas Mark Constantine Badke. Yanni G. Bambarakos. Renate Ariel Barker. Brandon Lee Chapin Barnes. Zachary Eugene Bart. Michael A. Baumhart. Jacob Joseph Baus. Alexa Marie Beck. Corey Allen Beecher. 
Grant S. Berg. <laughs> Leah Rose Blaskovic. <laughs> Tyler M. Bow. Taylor? Taylor. Taylor. Austin M. Borchart. Coy T. Brecklin. Edward M. Bramer. Hannah Faye Brodner. Jessica Bykowski. Sienna S. Calwerts. Molly Linnea Carlson. David Castillo. Cody W. Chase. Sebastian Shane Armstrong Cooper. Taylor H. Corcoran. Justin T. Cox. Elizabeth Ann Courier. David Henry Doherty III. Jessica Ann Irwin Davis. Johannes P. Deegan. Emily Ann Denbo. Jessica Lynn Drouse. Bradley Aaron Drew. Timothy K. Durning. Catherine Therese Dykstra. Keely Shea Eames. Johnnelly Ann Elliott. Sierra Nicole Ellsbury. Colleen Elzinga. Holly Irene Erickson. Ben Ryan Ermitinger. Sarah M. Ertel. Roman Jonathan Ewing. Stuart Douglas Farrell. Randall David Finger. David August E. Ferrari. <laughs> Catherine Grace Fleming. Abby Ruth Flower. Benjamin Jacob Folger. Brianna Marty Fredrickson. Joseph Daniel Galbraith. Ephraim Garza. Christopher Thomas G.
Samuel Gregory Georgeson. Casey Elizabeth Gerard. Margaret Elizabeth Goodwin. Raymond Lewis Gavrock. Alana Toy Green. Parker D. Groves. Emily Ann Gruber. Hunter Michael Grunwald. Oh, I missed Eve. Did I miss Eve? Eve McLeod Green. Yeah. Dylan Gray Gulick. Yeah. Kaylee Marie Herring. Michaela Renee Hartman. Jordan Rose Hartwig. Nicholas A. Henning. Avery Lynn Herbon. Drew Anthony Hetz. Abby Pauline Hilker. Harrison Quinn Hillman. Lauren E. Hintz. Leticia Lene Heiser. <laughs> Elliot J. Herdeman. <laughs> Patrick Ryan Hoffman. <laughs> Rose Miranda Hogmeyer. Erica M. Isaacson. Jillian Ann Marie Jackson. Justine Elizabeth Jacobson. Casey Allen Johnson. Sarah Alexis Johnson. Rebecca Lynn Jones. Nicholas J. Keita. David Alexander Knapp. Jessica L. Cobelt. Rachel Elizabeth Kawuje. Sherry Lee Cryer. Mallory Rose Crumry. Catherine E. Kulas. Nathan M. Larson. Jessica M. Latimer. Eric Patrick Lefebvre. Ellen Elizabeth Lear. Michael Andrew Lemish. Yay! 
Lillian Marie Link. Brant J. Linky. Claire G. Lo Cicero. Stephanie Lopez. Hannah Marie Marr. Sophia Curran Marchiando. Isaac Nelson Masters. Haley Amber Mathiason. Emma A. McDonald. Harley Keen Mitchelly. The diploma is being presented by Harley's mother, Karen Mitchelly, a Ripon College Sodexo colleague. Eleanor Catherine Miller. Molly Ann Nellen. Stephanie Rose Newman. Tu Tran Nock Win. Paul Allen Nineman. Courtney Nicole Olson. Casey M. O'Malley. Joshua A. Oswald. Matthew M. Payne. William Lee Penterman. <laughs> Megan Mary Piper. <laughs> Samantha Ray Rago. <laughs> Owen A. Reynolds. Megan Celia Ringo. Tyler A. Robita. Tene Marie Robinson. Nathan David Rundy. James Lawrence Sager. <laughs> Owen P. Skalma. Claire R. Scheibley. Miranda Lynn Schmid. Brock Walter Schneider. Joshua Adam Schubring. Tyler James Semenis. Gary D. Sexton III. Drew D. Slade. Morgan E. Smith. Marshall Perry Soar. Emily Felicia Stanzak. Jonathan Dennis Stalek. 
Rebecca L. Stenz. Brady N. Stockwell. Elizabeth Ann Swenson. Hannah M. Tetzloff. Richard Jacob Thomas Theus. Tenzin Seffel. Kelly Rose Ullman. Michael Arnold Usinger. Caitlin Nicole Van Swole. Cheyenne Sarah Vargo. Madison Jordan Vega. Grant Thomas Verkylen. Carissa Lynn Waite. Cordell J. Walker. Christine M. Wattrell. Devin Marie Wygant. Sophie Rabin Widman. Brian K. Wilson. Delu Glenn William Wilson. Dakota M. Wynn. Andrea Elizabeth Winters. Tekoa Robert Whitman. Ingrid Carrie Wood. Brock M. Woodman. Benjamin Joseph Wasniska. Jorge Zamora. Carmen Zapata. Jose Eduardo Zavala. And Daniel R. Zipperer. Let's have another round of applause for everybody. That's just fantastic. So good afternoon. I'm going to have some final, final words here. So today I carried a coin, and some of you on the stage carried that coin too with you as you came up. So here it is, the coin that was in my pocket. Uh, and I gave each of you in the graduating class this year this coin on August 23rd, 2014. And that was your first full day on campus. And we had ice cream in my backyard. And I think we also did the ALS ice bucket challenge, which I remember more than you do. Um, you all began your Rippin' experience that day, so I still have my coin, and I'm really pleased that so many of you, you still have yours, and I hope you'll keep it with you. So four years is a long time uh, when you're 21 or 22, but it feels a lot less of amount of a time when you're 49, uh, which I am. And 
Four years is 16 seasons and come and gone, and now we here we are, May 13th, 2018, and it's time for your college days at Ripon to end. And so my guess is if you cast your mind back to the day four years ago, and maybe your parents who were there on that day as well, you were a little bit apprehensive about what was to come. But over the course of the last four years, Ripon became your home, and you've achieved success in the classroom and on the playing fields and with your artistic and creative work. You've grown and benefited from working with us. But each of you, but each of us, I'm sorry, are better because of each of you. So I will always remember, and I will always remember this, sitting in a piazza in Venice, Italy, on a perfect sky blue day, eating pizza and laughing with Sophie Widman. I'm always gonna remember that. I now understand better what it means to be a true scholar athlete, having watched Isaac Masters and Emma McDonald hit countless three-pointers from way downtown and achieve excellence in the classroom. I went to presidential debates, including one moderated by our speaker today, Judy Woodruff, with Samantha Rago and DeLu Wilson. I talked politics with Lauren Hintz and Rose Hogmeyer. I celebrated Passover and Hanukkah with Hannah Brodner, and I taught Italian to Elizabeth Courier, Hannah Tetzloff, and my fantastic research assistant, Alexa Beck, all who were in that Italian class. I smiled spontaneously and actually laughed out loud at this year's senior day for women's basketball because when every member of the team was asked in the program to name their, fam fam their favorite athlete, all, all of the people chose Aaron Rodgers or Steph Curry, but John Lee Elliott, she chose her roommate, Kat Kulis, <laughs> as a volleyball standout, which I thought was great. So I know that you all have memories of your time here at Ripon too, and these will change as you grow older. For many of you, your years here will become larger and more powerful. And for others, Ripon will become a fond and sun-drenched, two and a half weeks ago it would have been snow-drenched, uh, memory of a special time in your life. So as the president of the college, I go around the country and I speak to Ripon alumni, and the conversation often starts something like this. Who were the people that made a difference to you when you were in college? And I assume one day a future president of Ripon will come to see each of you who are sitting here today, probably asking you for a donation, but that's another story. And by the way, you ought to give that person whatever they want when they come to see you. Um, but this future president of Ripon uh, will come and they'll ask you about the people that inspired you while you were here. And you will have a story ready. So maybe it was studying music with Kurt Dietrich or learning biology with the legendary Skip Whitler and Bob Wallace. For some of you, the ROTC program will lead to a lifetime of military service. Or perhaps you'll remember a trip to England to study Harry Potter and Beatrix Potter with Bob Amston and Jean Williams and Anne Plyce Morris. Or it could be that acting under the direction of Ken Hill in the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee will be your special memory. And for some, inspired by the leadership of people like Residence Hall, Director LaParish Barnes, you will find yourselves in careers devoted to social justice. No matter what you remember about Ripon in the years uh, ahead, we today celebrate your past and we celebrate your future. So after this ceremony, there are going to be smiles, there are going to be hugs, there are going to be tears. We will take photos to preserve the moment. It is kind of a happy and sad moment rolled all into one. And a month from now, at orientation, a new batch of first-year students from the class of 2022 will walk these same pathways that you have walked, sleep in the same dorms, hike on the same prairie, and run on the indoor track in the beautiful new Wilmore Center. And I will give each one of those first-year students a coin in August as they begin their journey to the place that you all sit right now. And so it is important that as the years pass, you remember Ripon College, this place you called home the past four years. You remember the alumni who came before you and those who are yet to be part of the Ripon experience. For the last four years, you've needed Ripon. Starting now, Ripon needs you, your expertise, your smarts, your connections, and yes, your resources. The college is what it is today because of the generosity of those who preceded you. It is said that to make people happy is one of the greatest things you can ever do. I know I speak 
for my colleagues and the faculty and staff as we look out over your smiling faces and your proud parents, there is much to be happy about today. We won't forget you. Don't forget Rippon. I wish you all good things today and in the years ahead. Thank you. I'd ask you all now to rise and uh, join in the singing of the alma mater led by the senior members of the Choral Union and Chamber Singers under the direction of Dr. John Hughes, Assistant Professor of Music and Director of Choral Activities. Ladies and gentlemen, following our presentation, this concludes the 152nd Commencement Exercises of Ripon College. For those of you who have traveled to be here with us today, thank you for joining us. To the class of 2018, congratulations. I'd like to remind you, uh, immediately following the, the, the music, at the top of the hill behind you, there is a reception in front of Smith Hall. Thank <laughs> you. 